Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. All right, so you got a bomb okay, pot hand for us? I do. It's played at a 2.35 up at the Matrix. All right. The regular, not the deep stack. The 2.3. Three... is pretty deep. Okay, and then we'll go to you, and then we've got a guy from Washington on hold here in the 202. Okay, so Matrix, bomb pot, right? Of course, a bomb pot is yep. when everybody puts in money blind like an ante, and then everybody plays post-flop, right? Correct. So is so this the big – this is a big big stack game? $10, $10, no, this, $20 bomb pot? This is the regular two, three, five, five hundred dollars $500 buy-in, but this hand will be fourteen seventy effective. So fourteen seventy effective, $20 each bomb pot. Okay. So the pot's 180 Yep. Hero is in under the gun plus one with 1800 Okay. And the main villain is in MP1, and I've never seen him before. Looks recreational. He's made some donkish plays, and he's shown up in a three bet pot with four or five offsuit. Okay. So that's all the info I have on him. Yep. So pretty um, wide. So 180 in the pot. Flop comes. Oh, hero has queen of clubs, four of clubs. Queen of clubs, four of clubs. And, uh, okay. Flop comes Queen of Hearts, Ten of Clubs, Six of Clubs. Queen of Hearts, Ten of Clubs, Six of Clubs. So you have top pair and a flush draw. Yeah. So okay. the uh, action goes uh, checks to me, mm -hmm. and I bet one twenty-five. So I have talked with our top section subs, uh, you know, who actually plays at Matrix Conlon. He's actually in town right now. I've talked with him quite a bit about bomb pot strategy, and it's interesting because on a board. I had a little discussion with somebody in a YouTube video that I did uh, like from a month ago on a bomb pot where if the board, let's say, for example, like you have an over pair and the board is not straightening, like it's jack seven deuce, um, there actually aren't that many hands that beat you. I mean, there's all the sets and there's all the two pairs. And it's sort of interesting. I'm still working on, on the non-straightening boards. The boards that people play absolutely horrifically are the ones where there are straights possible, especially like a three straight where there are – if you have a smooth street, three straight board like seven, five, six, there are 48 straight combos that beat like an over pair. You know what I'm saying? Like, But the issue with bomb pots is that because everyone is entirely uncapped – from Conlon's point of view is that you're actually supposed to small you are supposed to size small with your entire range to reflect the fact that everyone has an everyone can have the nuts. Now what's interesting is is that if you pull that off in the small games in a regular hand, people will misinterpret your small sizing as weakness and you can get put in some really crappy spots because people just think that like, oh, you're not strong because you're betting small. However, Conlon and I were actually out to dinner last night. We discussed this. I actually feel like if you use small sizing in a bomb pot, people won't have that reaction because everyone's so scared. Do you follow me? Like you could get away with betting like 40 or 50 and people aren't going to just like suddenly raise you like a regular hand. You know what I mean? Because you can have the nuts. So, so here, I mean, I would like to see you go smaller. Smaller. I think that your hand certainly is worth a bet because you can certainly continue on to a raise. Like, if you had, like, queen four not clubs, I don't think the hand is probably strong enough to bet unless it maybe got checked to you in late position. You follow? Yeah. So you bet 125, okay. And only the villain calls. And the villain calls. So, like, one, like two-fold villain calls, and then it folds all the way around. And the villain's in what position? MP1. In MP1, okay. So villain calls in MP1. So fair, not next to act, but fairly, right. fairly close. By the way, another another reason to size small is, is that not only are you reflecting the fact that everyone can have the nuts, you also manage the pot a little bit more. Because right now, now the pot's all of a sudden huge. Now you guys do have stack depth, but say you only started the hand with like 900. Now, all of a sudden, like you're, you've got like a pot size bet left or two pot size bets left, right? You might just have to get it all in on the turn, you know? Yeah. All right, so what's the turn? So the turn card uh, turn card comes the ace of clubs, so we make the second nut. Okay. And um, I lead for 375. So the pot is 430, and you lead for 375, is that right? 
I mean, that seems pretty large. I mean, obviously a queen should fold. You're just trying to get value from what lesser flushes, I guess, and straights like King Jack. I just felt like this guy was pretty bad, and he may continue with two pairs and something. I don't know, King Jack with the King of Clubs, anything. I, I mean, I, my I'm my very, initial, I I'm understand. Very donkish and, I mean, and, uh, I'm not good at bomb pots. So I'm, I'm trying, yeah, I just think this one I think you're using your sizing way too large here, and and it might you know you might be playing it like the same way that everyone else is, but everyone else is using sizing that's way too large. At least you have a nut hand here. I would just tend to not bet this big because I feel like you're just going to get a lot of folds. I mean, now like is a guy going to call a pot size bet with two pair? Like when you go lead lead, like when the club comes. I mean, if the pot is like four thirty, I might bet like two hundred or something. But okay, so you bet three seventy five. And uh, villain calls, and the river is the okay. ace of diamonds. So now the pot is what, like eleven eighty? Is that right? Something like that. Seven fifty so plus. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big. And you have like a thousand left, or you you actually have what nine hundred left, or something, right? Something like that. Maybe maybe a thousand. Right. Uh, yeah, something like that. Okay. So the river is the ace of diamonds. Okay. So the board pairs. And. So the board pairs, yep. and now it's, now it's kind of like my, my question. I think this guy's bad. Mm -hmm. um, do I try to target lower flushes? Do I just... Well, I find it very, I very hard. I find it very hard for this guy to have a full house unless it's ace-queen specifically. If you bet out from under the gun one and he called MP1, I feel like people play bomb pots sort of cautiously. Even the worst players really shouldn't be in there calling the flop with like ace ten, you know, ace six. And I figure that if he had a set on the flop, he's going to raise off. People are really, really scared, and they don't know what to do in a bomb pot. So I sort of find it hard to believe that. You know, obviously you block pocket queens, so there's seven seven combos of sets, right? So yeah. unless he has ace queen, it's just hard for him. I feel like to have a full house here. I would probably bet maybe 400, and then you've got 600 left, and I would just fold to a raise. I think if you bet 350 to 400 and he jams, there's there's no way you can possibly be good and you get value from worse here. Okay. You with me? What'd you do? Yeah. I, I jammed and got snapped off by pocket 10. Yeah. So, so what if you had bet 375? You might not even have gotten raised, which is kind of funny too, because people are so scared of 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 um, you know, just better hands, and it's a bomb pot. But I mean, let's say you bet three fifty or three seventy five, and he jams for one thousand. Do you think you can make the fold? Yeah, yeah, I could fold there. Yeah, so I think the jam is. Re I mean, I understand that you're trying to target smaller flushes, but um. I think I got lost dicey. by the combination of the not raising the flop with a set and yeah, that is a little strange. What I interpret what I interpreted as the skill level of this opponent. Yeah. Well, that sucks for you. You're probably not the biggest fan of bomb pots, right now. <laughs> the Omaha bomb pots have treated me much worse than the uh, than the Hold'em ones. Well, though, I so. I I mean I think Omaha bomb pots are, are ridiculous because. There are so many combinations. I mean, I've said this before. The best game for a bomb pot is actually PLO high-low because people are forced to play hands that they would never play, and you're chopping the pot between the high and the low, so it adds complexity. But if you're playing a PLO high bomb pot, like, the nuts are always there. Like, how, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just position's huge in these things, too, obviously. Um, the more out of position you are, the worse it is, you know, for you. But um, yeah. I would just suggest using smaller sizing next time. Okay? All right, great. Josh, thanks, thanks for lot, the Mark. call. Hey, guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button, and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200. Click on the link right there.